Photography is rarely ever a smooth process, especially when it comes to shooting on film. There's so many different aspects that play into the making of a good photo, ranging from things like inspiration to more technical things like getting a proper exposure on your film and figuring out how to scan your work. I get asked a ton of questions about different little snippets of my photography process. So today I'm gonna talk through start to finish how I make a photo. A good photo always starts with inspiration and a clear intention when it comes to subject matter. Whether you're photographing somebody specific, making more documentary work, or just looking for a story with your photos, photo books are an incredible way to stay inspired. And I think there's really a different experience when you have the intentionality of sitting down with a photo book and physically appreciating somebody's work. Photo books are my favorite way to consume photography and it's also just amazing to physically own a copy of somebody's work. My personal favorite source of inspiration outside of photo books are just museums and galleries. I recently visited the Chicago Institute of Art and I saw some incredible work there by painters like David Hockney and Edward Hopper. And your inspiration for your photography doesn't necessarily have to be somebody else's photos. Paintings, movies, books, or even just like experiences can be a great way to be inspired for making more photos. I'm definitely guilty of spending too much time on Instagram and I don't think it's a great source of inspiration but I do love that on Instagram there's a community of artists and you can talk to so many different people all in one place when it comes to the gear that I use to make my photos the main camera that I use is the Mamiya RZ67 this isn't anything new on this channel but it's a great camera because I like how close up you can get with it for portraits and I think waist level is a great perspective for being someone who does quite a lot of videos about gear here on YouTube, I'm actually quite a strong believer that the camera that you're using really doesn't impact the end result of a photo that much, especially when it's a film camera. The limitation of most of these cameras, especially when it comes to things like sharpness and color rendition and more technical things is most likely gonna be the film that's inside the camera. That's usually where the bottleneck is and things like lenses on different film cameras generally have pretty consistent looks regardless of what system you're using. Especially when it comes to pure optical quality, Mamiya and Pentax lenses and any other system you can name probably have similar glass and I don't think the lens is necessarily gonna be what defines the look of your photo I only own a single lens for this camera which is the 90 millimeter 3.5 I like to keep it simple with just one lens it's great for portraits but also it does the nice walk around stuff and it's just overall nice to just have one lens that does everything for my slower paced work that I've been making in New Jersey I've been using a large format Toyo 45a which is a field camera that shoots a massive 4x5 negative which means that you just get incredibly detailed photos the colors are beautiful on large format and it's a really slow process setting up that camera which makes me super intentional with the photos that I'm actually taking the film is also just stupidly expensive but if you're very intentional and careful with the photos that you make it's definitely worth it when it comes to actually shooting I use this iconic light meter to control the exposure of my film I've also talked about this before, but the main thing that it allows me to do is choose whether I'm metering for the highlights or the shadows in the photo. And that's the biggest determining factor in how the exposure affects the film. So I definitely recommend you get a light meter if you're starting out and you've never tried one before. One of the things I get asked most is how do I develop a visual style in my photos? It's hard for me to break down my specific visual style. So I'm gonna talk about some other photographers visual styles. My good friend Lauren Tepfer has an incredibly colorful style and that came as a derivative of her shooting work about her adolescence and just the coming of age as a central theme in that work. She didn't decide one day that she was gonna make colorful pictures. Her style came from carefully choosing her subject matter. Another example is somebody like Stephen Shore. He has a totally different, very natural, but detailed picture style. And that also obviously comes from his subject matter and choosing to photograph everyday common experiences in America. The pictures look very relatable, the colors are beautiful, but again, it came because of his subject matter. I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's super important that you very clearly understand what you're trying to take photos of before you try and decide how you're gonna capture it. For a long time, I developed my own color film and this was a really fun experience as I really felt like I was in control of every step of the process 
of making my photos. I just developed with a Patterson tank and a standard color C41 kit, and it was really affordable to develop film that way. For a long time, I also scanned all of my work on a really affordable scanner, which was the Epson V600. You can pick one of those up for just about 200 bucks, and I probably recommend that as the best way to start learning to understand how color works in a photo and how to properly color balance a film image. You can also just take so much more control over the final look of your own pictures. And that really taught me a lot about how to work with color. That's it for this video. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. I try to answer most of them. Aside from that, you can check out my Instagram, which is at Willem Verb. That's it for now. Peace.